A lot of you know that my mother had macular degeneration and I actually have dry macular degeneration myself. I'm not yet going blind, but we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. So I've got a lot of interest in uh, blind accessibility anyway. And so um, I've now stopped by the Vision Aid booth to talk to uh, Taylor Spiegel, who has a terrifying pitch that he's going to convince me to try on these goggles anyway. Let's uh, let him tell you what they're in business to do here. Absolutely. Um, so we at Vision Aid, we're focused on developing mixed reality technologies, so headsets like this, and how that can improve the lives of those with visual impairments. And so our first product is called Eye Disease Simulator. Oh, goody! That sounds fun, Taylor. It is exactly what it sounds like. We're on the nose with the name. And it allows people to experience firsthand life through the eyes of someone living with eye disease. And it can be from the earliest stages of macular degeneration, for example, to the most advanced stages. And the idea here is really all about empathy and understanding from medical students who are the future doctors and practitioners that are going to be seeing thousands of patients. Can they better understand that journey as well as someone recently diagnosed as well as their loved ones around them? interesting idea with the loved ones to be able to understand what you really can't do or, or where you're going to need help and, and what it feels like, huh? Yes, and we've heard countless stories of those where you know somebody might drop a pen and be able to pick it up, but then they also can't see the TV in front of them. And a spouse or a loved one is confounded by that concept and through being able to see the eyes of that individual can completely change relationships, dynamics at home. For example, color contrast of cups. You have a white countertop, you have white cups, you have white plates. We've had people whose the spouse has experienced it, went home, rearranged the house, got high contrast cups, and their whole lifestyle at home, which is your everyday life, has improved as a result. That's a really interesting idea. I do remember my son Kyle making fun of my mother because we were watching the Rose Parade and my mother could barely see at this point and she said, hey, did you notice the water coming off the wheels on that cycle on the left side? And he's like, you've been faking all this time? But it happened to be something she could see out of the side of her eye because the center of vision was gone, but not the side. But he still gave her a hard time. She had a good sense of humor about it, though. Well, that's good. And, and we hear a lot of those stories. And, and this we, we began Vision Aid from our own personal experience. My co-founder's grandfather suffered from macular degeneration. We saw firsthand his trajectory and how his path was. And we started to explore, well, what other technologies are out there that can help him and the entire family. And through that, we started developing, finding those gaps and developing our own technology. Now, when we were speaking a little bit earlier, he mentioned that, that maybe if he'd been able to see a simulation of what his future was going to be, he would have gotten more medical care earlier and had things maybe slowed it down at the very least? Yes. With a lot of these diseases, macular degeneration, glaucoma, there's not a cure but you can slow down its trajectory dramatically. And in a lot of situations, if you're lucky, you can outlive the disease, if you will. Um, yeah. So you'll never go legally blind. However, if you wait until, your, let's say you have early stage glaucoma, you can see just fine today, but they were able to detect it. You'll wait years in some situations to take your drops and to go into regular appointments until it's too late, until you can't see well and your vision will never get better. And the trajectory of that disease now means you're losing functional vision actively and more rapidly. Yeah, I know two people who had early stage glaucoma and were able to get a surgery that they did the drops and that stopped being effective but they kept at it with the doctors and they had surgery that actually has now stabilized it for for now at least and uh, with macular degeneration my, grand, uh, my uncle uh, did get the injections and it was probably like an extra decade that he was able to drive continuously and still read before it, it actually did progress beyond that. But he was quite elderly at the, by the time it hit him really badly. So, And that's the goal, you know, in a way, is to effectively outlive it. And it doesn't just impact the individual, but everyone around them, their whole family experience, you know, the ability to have your own independence and be able to drive late into, you know, as late as possible, as long as you need to. Um, that's really our goal. There's great treatments and medications out there. We're one of the few companies who are building technologies to make your senses worse, but with the longer goal of improving quality of life um, and patient outcomes. Now, so I think you're going to make me wear this, uh, this uh, virtual reality headset. And this is an audio podcast, but also has video. So I'm going to be describing in detail what I see. Um, but one of the questions I asked Dr. Heatley is your advisor here. And uh, I asked him, how you actually simulate what it is someone can't see because you can't see through their eyes. You can see the effect on the, the, the physiology, but you really don't know what they can't see unless they have a way to describe it to you in some way. So a little bit of this is generalization, I think. Yes, so there's obviously a body of clinical research of different ways to measure one's 
low vision or blindness, if you will. Um, one common mis uh, misconception is that if you lose vision, it's always just blackness or, or lack of vision. But a lot of the times, take macular degeneration, you lose central vision, it's kind of like a blend of the colors of the environment around you. So it's more of a gray or the tones of, you know, if you're in a forest, in theory, it'd be different kind of blended colors of that green background of a forest. And that's part of what we're trying to get through is also create a gold standard of representation of these diseases. Because if you go on, you know, three different websites and Google, you know, what does it look like with glaucoma? You may get three different things. And that inconsistency drives us crazy, uh, personally. And that's part of our goal there is, you know, we can look at things, not only the clinical research, uh, but also let's say somebody has a lack of vision in one of their eyes. And so, you know, glaucoma or macular degeneration is impacting just their right eye. Well, that means that they are a great um, candidate to help inform us on the accuracy of our own data because their right eye is experiencing the disease, but they can still see our simulation with the left eye. And so we can do that type of research on our end to help fine tune what the diseases look like. Very, very interesting. Now, you've got several different kinds of eye diseases that I'm going to get to be able to see. Uh, do you have, uh, is it retina pigmentosa? Uh, we don't yet. Um, we're actually, that's the next disease that we're developing today. That's the one I don't, I don't have any feel for what they can see. So uh, we'll, I'll come back next year and see what you've done with it. Uh, you know, when you're upstairs, <laughs> maybe I, I just am real curious what that one looks like. But I guess, is it time to torture me? Let's do it. So I think um, you may have to hold the microphone. I will. So when I'm talking, you need to hold it right up on me, and then when you're talking, hold it right up on you. That's perfect. You got I'll, it? I'll make sure the disease is on, and then we'll swap okay. rules. All right. Terrify me. The disease is on, he the says. The disease is on. You're looking at intermediate uh, to severe stage macular generation. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that's interesting. I'm seeing a pretty annoying gray bubble in the middle where uh, right now I'm looking directly at Taylor, and I can't see his face, but if I look over towards Steve to the left, now I can, if I, it's kind of like when you try to look at a star and it disappears, but if you look away, you can see it. Yeah, I, I don't want to see this, but okay, so that's moderate to severe. What are you going to do to me next? All right. So one key note with macular degeneration is central vision loss. That's your high fidelity vision. That's your color vision. Um, and so that sometimes can be, even at the smallest little blind spots in the center of your vision, can take away a lot of your functionality, your ability to read, especially look at someone's in the face, your loved one in the eyes. You lose that ability. So not only independence, but a lot of the elements that make us us. And so this is macular degeneration. I'm going to make this one stage worse for you before we move on, if that's okay. That sounds awesome. Okay. Okay, I'm seeing the screen right now, so I don't think I'm supposed to be, am I? Uh, it is something that is okay. I'm going to actually navigate with that screen. Okay. So I just increased the severity to a late stage macular degeneration. So your center blind spot should be darker, it should be larger, and you're relying more and more on your peripheral vision. Yeah, that's really interesting. So it's, it's almost black in a lot of areas, but it's got blobby gray spots, and then most of the outside of it is gray, and I'm seeing, you know, maybe 10% around the edges. Yeah, I, I could see how I could maybe walk through a room if I always look sideways, but that's about all I could do. Yeah, and, you, and people who have this disease have to train themselves over time to rely entirely on your peripheral vision, uh, which is incredibly challenging. Yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard not to look at you. I have to look away in order to see you. That's interesting. Okay, what, what other torture do you have? So let's go ahead and introduce you to glaucoma. Oh, goody. I do know uh, the one thing I understood that my mother was really experiencing something awful with macular dege degeneration was when they thought she might have glaucoma and that terrified her because all she had left was the, the periphery. So to lose that would have been terrible. Luckily they were wrong. Yes, and we do have the ability with our eye disease simulator to stack the diseases because that brings up a very good point which is you, your eyes won't necessarily be symmetric and you could have more than one condition. Um, but right now you're experiencing glaucoma and this is, think of it as tunnel vision. So you're losing the majority of all your peripheral vision. So I'm noticing with this one, with my left eye, I've got some central vision. The right eye has very, very little. Is that on purpose? You've made it unbalanced? Correct. Something that's often overlooked is the asymmetry of one's eyes. A disease does not impact you the same on your left eye versus your right eye. It can progress differently. And so your mind actually does a very good job if you lose a part of your vision in one eye. The other eye does a great job accommodating in your brain to process that information. Um, but it's really when those things like blind spots overlap that you completely lose that visual information. 
Wow. Yeah, this is uh, this is terrifying, but I think it is good to try to try to understand it and experience it. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. All right. All right. So if people wanted to find out more, oh wait, no. Tell you have another product that you also make, which is why the company's called Vision Aid, not Vision Terrify People, make them scared to death. That is, even though that's a great name, I do I do appreciate it. Um, yeah, so VisionAid started uh, because our goal is to improve the quality of lives and aid the vision of um, those suffering from diseases. And so in a way, we do think Eye Disease Simulator is a vision aid in the sense that it can help through the right actions retain vision for longer. But uh, our other product that we have in R&D right now is, uh, we call it VisionAid Air, but it's actually augmenting uh, one's vision in real time. So think of it as similar experience you put on glasses, the mixed reality headset, but we now with the feet of the world around you can change that image in real time and help accentuate and improve your available vision. So for example, if you have uh, wavy vision, like that's a symptom with a lot of diseases, if, and it's warped. If we know where that is, we can, because we have the image, we can counter warp that image. If oh, you, say AI in that sentence. <laughs> it's gotta be some AI gonna happen there. <laughs> at CES, there's gonna be a lot of AI, it's like kind of AI washing, um, but yeah, that can be part of the training just to make us go faster, and we can customize that faster. I see AI really as an accelerant um, in that process. But really the fundamentals of optics are, um, if you can increase the light saturation and delivery to your eyes, it can actually help reduce those blind spots that you saw a minute ago with like macular regeneration. Um, it, we can change color contrast, higher contrasts, um, so that you can still have differentiation. So there's a lot that we can do to effectively put on a pair of sunglasses, if you will, and allow someone to have instant improvement in their vision. And so that's really our main dreamscape right now with VisionAid is step one, we're going to make your vision worse, uh, but really step two is, is augment that vision and improve it. If people want to find out more about your work, where would they go? Uh, VisionAid.io. Uh, you can find out more about all of the products that we have both uh, available today as uh, well as coming down the pipeline. All right. Well, congratulations for uh, the work that you do here. This is cool. Thank well, you. Thank you so much for coming by. Appreciate it.